I'll be showing 10 new features in Teams for Education. This includes a new Learning Accelerator's entry point, classwork, reflect updates, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is a Learning Accelerator's button added to the assignment form. I'll click Create at the bottom and choose New Assignment. Here is the standard assignment form and you're going to see this new Learning Accelerators button. If I click it, you're going to see some of our Learning Accelerators. Reading Progress, which hopefully many of you already know. Search Progress, which is coming out soon. And we're also actively working on Math Progress and Speaker Progress. If you click here to learn about them, you'll get even more. So you can see Reading Progress, Search Progress, and then learn about the new ones that are coming soon. But you can actively just launch Reading Progress right here, for example. Click Reading Progress and you're ready to go. We also still have reading progress and search progress on the attach menu, and we're going to migrate these fully over to learning accelerators. So right now you're going to see them in both places. The second new feature is a set of educator quick actions in the assignment list. I'm here in my assignments list and over on the right hand side, you're going to see this new three dot menu and there's a bunch of handy options here. I will click this. First off, it's really easy to edit your assignment. So if I choose edit here, it pops me right back into that assignment and I'll click cancel. Go back again, if I choose copy link, now I can copy this link to the clipboard and I can send it out really easily. Another option is to duplicate the assignment. So if I click here, I can choose any class, so maybe I want chemistry period three, and it will copy that assignment right into there. I'll click cancel. Other options include marking as inactive, or I can just delete the assignment right there. So a bunch of nice, quick, and easy actions right here on the menu, that's gonna save educators time. The third new feature is classwork. Classwork lets educators organize everything that they want into modules, content, curriculum, and then publish it out to students who can then work on it. Okay, so I'm here in a class team, and on the left-hand side, you'll see this new classwork, and I'm signed in as an educator. I'm gonna click on classwork. What you see is I've already created a couple of modules in my chemistry class, Introduction to Chemistry and Atomic Structure and the Periodic Table. I'll expand this just to show what it looks like. I have a set of different pieces of content here that I've organized. I've got a video, I've got a pointer to a channel, Word documents, OneNote pages, links to sites, everything that you might need. Atomic structure, I'll expand this. Similarly, you can see all of this is organized in just the way that I want. If I wanna also drag and drop, it's really easy to reorder these pieces of content within a module. Maybe I wanna pull the OneNote page a little bit higher, or maybe I wanna put the channel right here. So really easy to drag and drop. Also over on the right, there's a three dot menu. I can open this, I can download it, I can edit the display name, move it to a different module or delete it. So lots of different options. The other thing to note is that when you build a new module, which I'll do in just a moment, it doesn't publish it to the class until you're ready. So if you wanna have everything prepped, you can do that and leave it in a draft state and then publish it when you're ready. I'll also show how you can pin modules to the top and make it really easy for the class to find the module that they want to work on. Now, as an educator, we're going to create a brand new module here. So at the bottom, I will click Add Module. I'm going to give that a name. Chemical Bonding and Reactions. Let's give it a description. There is my description. Now, I can do things like bold and underline and highlight, even put links in here, so you can make the description as rich and interesting as you'd like. Now, I'm going to go click Save. There's my draft module, and you can see right here it says draft state. Now the first thing you wanna do is add resources, or you could drop files, but we're gonna click the plus to add resources. You have many options. We're gonna start out with something simple. We're gonna add a file, and I'm gonna choose a file that I already have in my OneDrive. So I'll click OneDrive. I'll go into my chemistry folder, and I'll add the chemical bonds handout, and click attach. And it adds that Word document right there. You can also add new files. So maybe I'll click plus here and I will choose file and choose new file. For example, if I wanna give a video intro to my class, I can add a video recording. So I'll click that there and choose next. Here's our video recorder. I will click this to record, get a countdown. Hey class, even though Breaking Bad showed a lot of bad things chemistry teachers do, our class for chemistry is gonna be amazing. Okay, hit next. Hey class, even though Breaking Bad So there is my video, click next, give it a title, Breaking Bad Chemistry Intro, hit upload, and then done. Now if I went on drag drop, I can just put this at the top, so I will click on this and drag up, and it easily reorders that. Let's go back up to plus, you can also add assignments, so I'll click here. You can add from a class, you can add a new assignment, you can add a new quiz, 
or you can create from existing assignments. So if you have assignments in the past, you can easily pull them in. I'm gonna choose add from this class. So there's my assignments. I'm gonna choose chemical reactions lab and attach that into here. Now I've got that assignment that I've already set the grading categories on and the weightings. So that is assignment that's been added. Go plus again. Now class notebook, one of my favorites, you can add an existing page or a new page. I'm gonna choose an existing page here. I've already set up my class notebook here. I will click content library and I will add chemical bonding and reactions. And then we'll go and choose this page right here and attach. Now I've added my chemical reactions OneNote page. Let's click plus again. You can even point to different channels. So if you have different channels over on the left, you see I have a couple different channels here. I'm going to point to a channel and then I'm going to choose chemical bonding and reactions and hit attach. Now this will take them right to a channel. So if you have a lot of content or discussion in that channel, you can have that. And lastly, I'm going to add just a link to a site. So I'll click plus and choose link. I'll add a link to a Khan Academy YouTube video. There is the Khan Academy link. And there is the text to display it automatically picks that up. You can even include the thumbnail in it. I'll hit attach. And there's my Khan Academy video. And again, maybe I want to reorder this. I will drag this, put that right there. So now my module is all set up and note that it's still in draft. I have not published it. And also there's a couple options you have here. So if I hit the three dot menu, I can edit the name of the module or delete it right now. We'll just leave it as it is. Now I'm going to publish this module. So let's hit publish. You get a confirmation. The module on all active resources will be made visible to students and you cannot hide it after you publish it, but you can still edit or delete it after the fact. So let's hit publish and it's publishing. Okay. All done as easy as that. One other thing I will add in the near future in the next coming months. So probably in early fall of 2023, we're going to be adding the ability for educators to reuse their modules. So one semester, you might have a set of modules that are structured in a certain way. We're going to let you pull that same structure in to reuse those modules and save an enormous amount of time for educators. One more thing I'll show before we switch over to the student. You can pin this module to the top or any other module. So if I go to the three dot menu here, I can now say pin module. And if I pin that, what happens is see how it says pinned up at the top. So maybe you're going to a specific module in the middle of the semester and you want all the students to focus on that. Now that is going to be pinned when the student signs in. As you can see right here, the other modules are lower. You can pin any module. So if you want to swap out, I say pin here and it puts the atomic structure as the pinned one. But I'm going to go and choose chemical bonding and reactions as the pinned module. That's up at the top. Now I'm going to switch over to the student and show what they see. I'm signed in as the student now and over on the left, I will choose classwork from my account. Classwork loads up and hey, there is the pinned chemical bonding and reactions module. It also gives a nice little summary. There's one assignment, one notebook page, two files, one link and one channel. And I can expand this. Here are all the different parts that my educator added, including the video, the word document, the assignment, Khan Academy link, OneNote page and a pointer to a channel. So I can go and start working through this module just in the way that my educator wanted. Classwork is also supported on iOS and Android. So I'm going to switch over to my iPhone to briefly show what the student experience is on classwork. Here I am. I'm going to choose my chemistry class. Now I'm going to go to the top and choose the new classwork app to drill in. There are my three modules. I can expand one. There's my chemical bonding and reactions. I can launch the video right there at the top. Hey class, even though breaking okay, pretty nice, switch back. So everything you need is right there. All the modules. The fourth new feature is adding classwork modules directly from assignment creation. Now let's say that I've already created modules in classwork right here. There's a new option. I can select the module and I can put this new assignment directly into one of my modules. So in this case, chemical bonding and reactions. Also note, I can even put it into a draft module if I haven't published that yet, but I'll choose chemical bonding and reactions. And now this assignment will get saved directly into that module. The fifth new feature is a student preview for assignments that educators are preparing. Let's see, I've got an assignment here and I'm going to give it a title and instructions. So I have my title and instructions in the document and at the bottom, there's a new student view. This lets the educator see what is that assignment going to look like when the student receives it. So if I click student view, here's a preview of what the assignment looks like when the student gets it. So the title, the instructions, the reference materials, 
even has the immersive reader in the upper right. So as an educator, I can see exactly how that integrates. So really handy. That is just built right in. And when you click back, you go back to the assignment and that is ready to assign. I'll just click there. The sixth new feature is grid view on mobile, a big improvement. So I'm going to tap teams at the bottom and look at this all laid out in a much easier to grasp way, all of your class teams. So I'm going to tap into one. Now all the apps you need are right along the top and the channels are below. So I'm drilling into classwork, one of those apps. I'll expand it. You can see everything there. If I go back, I'm going to drill into a channel. Channels have more space for posts as well. So a big improvement to make that mobile experience better on both iPhone and iPad, Android and tablet. The seventh new feature is improvement to the reflect check-in experience. So I'm going to click on new check-in and now you can say, how are you feeling about and add whatever you want. So in this case, after the exam, you can click on settings and there's some improvements here. So now you can choose the simplified or broad emotional vocabulary. The UI also really allows you to quickly show names or not and sharing the results. So I'm going to preview this and just a little click. There's my feelings monster. I can choose what I want. I'm feeling jealous after the exam. I'm feeling lonely. We'll switch here. In this case, I'm feeling comfortable. I'm feeling proud and then submit. Now click create check-in and we've created that reflect check-in. The eighth new feature is setting together view, our very popular feelings monster view as the default view that you see when you drill into a check-in. I've got the check-in I just created here and we're going to pretend the whole class has filled this out. Now I'm going to click this and here's the full together view. I can click on any feelings monster and see what the person is and what their emotion was. I can go and hide the name. So if I want to show this to the entire class, now everyone is anonymized and I can hover and show how that class is feeling to my class. If I hit the three dot menu, I can see the actual responses and how they're distributed. This is the former default view. You can drill in and see even more details about how your class is feeling. The ninth new feature is an improved quiz dialogue. I'm signed in as an educator to Teams Assignments and at the bottom I'll click Create and I'll choose New Quiz. There's a new dialogue here that makes it easier to sort and find things. There's My Quizzes, you can see these here. If people have shared quizzes with you, it shows up here. If you've marked any as favorites, they show up as well. And if I go here, I can search quiz title just like I could before. There's my Chemistry Unit 1 quiz. And you can still create the new quiz right here, just like you could in the past. So with these new filters and pivots, it makes it easier to sort and find quizzes. The 10th new feature is inline navigation with direct links to Teams features such as conversations. I'm going to go here first and grab a link to a conversation. So here is in a channel. I'll click the three dot menu and choose copy link. Now I'm going to go into assignments at the bottom, click create and new assignment. We'll give it a quick title and description. Okay. Now click attach and choose link. I'm going to paste that link to the conversation. It's right here and it is the chemistry conversation. I'll click attach. Now it adds this right here and this has always been supported. But now when a student gets this assignment, they can navigate directly to that conversation. So if I go to the bottom and choose student view, this is a preview of what the student will see. And when the student clicks on this right here, it navigates them directly in line to that conversation. If you want to keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.